decide. Please question whether or not you're supposed to take every single step. Because believe it or not, when you're riding with no bridle, you can get a little bit nervous about being able to stop. So what you do is you tell the horse, I want you to be a little bit more resistant to going forward. Because if you're a little bit more resistant to going forward, that's also another way to say you're looking forward to stopping. So, four-leaf clover pattern, bareback and rideless, turn your body, look ahead. The pattern's going to help you remember to turn your body, to look ahead, to find around the cone. How many times would I do the four-leaf clover pattern? If it's a really young horse, you need to talk to your vet first about how much stuff. I don't start doing a ton of drilling, but it won't hurt generally to do, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of it. And then you can do a break whether or not you do it every day. But at some point, I want this horse to go through different stages. Different stages meaning, when I first start doing the pattern with a horse, the horse is gonna be, eh, just kind of whatever, okay, they'll go around, it doesn't see the pattern. It just sees a bunch of cones there and you're steering it around. Let's say that you go around it 50 times. After you've gone around that pattern 50 times, the horse starts to go, hey, I've got an idea. We're gonna keep going up there, turning left, up there, turning left, up there, turning left, up there, turning left. How about if I help you out here? So what they do is they go up here and they go, done this about 50 years, 60 years, depends on your horse. How about if I try to turn left earlier and run the cone over? So what they do is they get up here and you're going like, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be this close. And they're trying to run the cone. Then they make this really wide turn over here. Also looks like bad arrow racing too. So, so what you start doing is you start running into problems, and that's when people say, well, the pattern's not working because now my horse knows the pattern, and now the horse is trying to cheat. That's when you actually start to get training. You start to do your training now that the horse knows what's coming up and is trying to defy you, and you need to go ahead and say no. I know, and you know, and we all know that we're going to go up here and make a turn to the left, but you're going to listen to me. When we get up here, I'm going to hold on my left rein, I'm going to pull on my right rein, and I'm going to move your shoulder out. You're going to listen to me. When you ride them through the stage where they're good at first, and then they're bad, and then they're good, now you got somewhere. So don't get frustrated when you're in the, uh-oh, it's not working so well stage. Okay, Roxy, how are you feeling this morning? Guess it's afternoon. She says, a little bit lazy. So, how many of you counter canter your horses? Hey, we got about three hands. <laughs> counter canter, okay, so clapping now. Counter canter is a fancy way of saying loping on the wrong lead. So, the next time that you're riding around and one of your friends says, hey, you're on the wrong lead, you say, no, I'm a counter canter. <laughs> they will be confused and impressed. So, what I'm doing right now is called a counter canter, which is, like I said, a fancy way of saying that the horse is on the wrong lead on purpose. The reason we do this is because it proves that we have body control over the horse. It proves that I can make her do what's more work and I can hold her in this body position while we do a morally clover pattern on the wrong lead. Jeez. Then,
training. It took about 800 hours of training to go from an unbroke hole to the first time that I took the bridle off. 800 hours. That includes groundwork, that includes stuff. Then it took me another year to get to the point where I felt comfortable enough that I could actually take the saddle off. <laughs> the difference when I take the saddle off is there's no stirrups. And some of the things are really difficult to do. Mainly that stinking sliding stop. Because what happens is when I stop, and this is going to be sticky, so it's going to look painful, but really, it, ooh. when she stops, it's blah. And what happens is normally in the stirrups, you can brace against the stirrups. And so we completely lose that. So that is my maneuver that's the most difficult one for me to do. So when you walk by the booth and you watch the videos playing on a loop over there, or probably the way that Ellen DeGeneres found out about it was because of the internet and it went around, it went viral around the world. And a lot of you, everybody clapped if you saw it through the internet. That thing went everywhere. And this is Greg down here. Greg, can you wave? He's in the arena up there. This is Greg. This is the guy that actually owns Roxy. And some of you know him because some of you have listened to it so many times that you figured out that it's Greg Gessner from Strasburg, Ohio. Some of you would call him. Yeah, when is she for sale? <laughs> and she knows she's not for sale. And, um, and, and, and everybody says, how is it that you don't own that mare? And I don't own that mare. I rode her mother, but I don't own her because the day that she was for sale, we were broke. <laughs> and so she was for sale, we were broke, and we really wanted to ride her. And Greg had been riding with us for a while, and he had said to us a while before that, if you ever find a horse that you think would be a really nice horse that you want to train and ride, give me a call. So we called up Greg. Hi, Greg. We have a horse. Will you please buy it and let us ride it? So when people say, <laughs> so when people say you wish you owned her, Greg believed in us when nobody else did. So no, I was completely happy with her being owned by Greg. Thank you, Greg! Thank you, Greg! She's been a really fun mare for all of us. So let's go ahead and go fast here, Roxy. My favorite thing to do on Roxy is to run. I think it's that black stallion thing. The arena's too small. I apologize. <laughs> Can't go that fast. We can go a little bit faster on the straight stripe, but not really. Huge arena, 